Subscribe to Teco on YouTube or you will forever be a bot at Fortnite. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So if you know me, you know that I used to have a serious problem with both raging and tilting. I couldn't finish an hour session in game, a tournament, or anything like that without yelling, hitting something, or even just getting off the game completely because I was just so mad. This was always a super annoying issue for me and one that really took me a long time to figure out and fix. So instead of letting you go through the same struggle I did for more than two years, I'll be going over a bunch of the things that I did to cope and greatly reduce this issue. I won't be doing what most people do and talking about some fancy mental crap that doesn't even work. I'll instead be discussing the things I've learned to do from my experience as somebody who has always had issues with tilting and getting super mad whenever I played. If you guys go on to enjoy this video, it would mean a lot to me if you could drop a like, and if you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing as well, it's completely free to you and it really helps me a ton. But enough with the self promotion, let's get right into the video. So let's start this video off by defining what tilt actually is, because that's the main issue that most of us have, some without knowing. Tilt basically refers to whenever you're constantly losing or performing poorly for a few rounds and then it starts to snowball, either causing you to have a sudden outburst eventually or just be continuously frustrated and make you perform worse over time. For oh, fuck's sake, now the keys won't- I'm done! <laughs> I'm done! <laughs> Not only can tilt be bad for your mental health in the long run, but it can also hinder your performance in a number of ways including impairing your judgment, causing you to make poorer decisions and play worse in fights, hurting your confidence, making you panic and feel anxious more often while playing, and potentially a number of other ways, but from experience, those are the ones that impacted me the most. So the goal of this video is to give a number of methods you can use to avoid tilting. So anyway, let's get started with the first tip. First, we'll be talking about anger devices. Anger devices are things that are quite literally meant to take your anger out on. Instead of hitting your desk, damaging equipment, or anything like that, you're much better off having something you can use to get rid of that anger. When you panic and die, or your brain decides to get angry at something, you'll have this sudden outburst of rage and energy that people often refer to as an adrenaline rush, or as an adrenaline dump. Just sitting there and trying to stay quiet might work for some people, but it might also make it worse. To handle this, a lot of people use an anger device, which is basically a term for something you can take your anger out on without damaging anything in the process. A few things people might do include using a stress ball, which is basically a small handheld ball that you can squeeze and take energy out on. Some people also just exercise when they get this sudden adrenaline dump, like getting down and doing some push-ups or anything along those lines. And if you have the money and space for it, I've seen some people literally buy a boxing bag to hit whenever they get super mad. It might sound crazy, but just think about it for a second. With that insane energy dump, it's an easy way to take out any aggression and anger by literally punching, an action that's associated with anger and aggression. And hey, it's good cardio as well, so you might actually be able to benefit from getting mad at Fortnite. Second is actually a mindset I found to be super helpful in people who just really want to improve and don't just play to make themselves think they're the best. Basically, if you're not just WKing bots to boost your own ego and you're actually trying to improve as a player, the improvement mindset is for you. Basically, the improvement mindset consists of, instead of getting mad when you die and tossing it off, looking at every single death as an opportunity to improve. One thing I've learned over my years of analyzing and improving at Fortnite myself, is that if you die, you've always made a mistake. If you didn't make a single mistake, you wouldn't die in Fortnite. So, instead of getting all mad about it, blaming your opponent for being a sweat, blaming RNG, or whatever else you might think of, I might sound a bit too aggressive saying this, but the truth is, it's your fault. It's 100% your fault, nobody else's at all. You were the one who screwed up. If you died off spawn to RNG, you probably landed at a bad loot area or landed too heavily contested without a backup plan. If someone psychoed into your box with a heavy snipe, your situational awareness wasn't good enough. In simple terms, if you die, you've always made a mistake. So instead of getting your panties in a twist, look back at your gameplay and figure out what you could have done better. The way I always think about it is like this. If you rewatch all of your gameplay and figure out every single mistake you made, you wouldn't have any more mistakes. It sounds crazy, but when you think about it enough, you realize that it's actually true. So next time you're pissed off and ready to break something, take a quick breath, realize that you screwed up, and watch back the replay to see what you can fix for next time. If you can successfully employ this mindset, which will take practice by the way, 
Not only will it help you reduce your anger and tilt, but it'll make you a better player as well over time. The third tip of this video is to limit your games. If you've watched Unknown X Army, one of the best solo players in the world, play in a cash cup, you might notice that he randomly takes breaks while he plays and does something like go on YouTube, Twitter, or other socials, maybe hop into a creative, or just completely go AFK and do something else. This is because of a rule known as the three game rule. The three game rule basically states that for the first two hours of the tournament, Unknown will only play three games each hour and then finish the last few in the third hour. You don't have to directly copy this, but it's important to set some sort of limit on your gameplay. That can be by setting a certain number of games per hour like Unknown does, playing only a certain amount of time each day, or anything else you can think of. Setting a limit on your games and doing something else will allow you to clear your head after playing for an extended period of time. By playing for even an hour straight without a break, you'll find that your performance gets worse extremely fast. So by setting these limits, you'll allow yourself to reset mentally and to continue performing at a high level throughout a longer period of time. The fourth tip of this video kind of goes hand in hand with the third one, and it's to play other games. If you play nothing but Fortnite when you're on your computer, PlayStation, or whatever you play on, you'll tilt and get tired of it much faster. Even if you don't think you're tired of the game, there's a good chance you are. One thing I do a lot, and recommend everybody watching to do, is to play some other games. Similar to limiting your time in game, this helps you reset mentally and keep your mind off of past losses in Fortnite. If I get mad after losing a few games of Fortnite, for example, I can simply hop on another game like Minecraft, GTA, Kovacs, or something else and just reset my mind, hang out and get in a positive mindset again. So when I come back to Fortnite, I won't be so tilted. For example, Booga likes to hop into Discord with a few friends after his streams to cool down and play some CSGO. Even at the top level, playing some other games can benefit you more than just playing Fortnite, especially if you're tilted or tired after playing for multiple hours like most of us are. One other thing I've noticed over time, especially when I used to tilt a lot, is that I mostly got mad in solos. When I played team modes like duos, trios, or squads with solid players or just friends that I enjoyed hanging out with, I had a tendency to tilt a lot less, and it actually helped my mindset even when I went back to solos. So maybe instead of grinding solos all the time, I'd recommend playing some team modes as well, almost as much or even as much as you play solos. I think the main reasons this helps are due to RNG having less of an impact, the communication and interaction aspect of it, the increased odds of winning, and just getting a break from the same old thing over and over again. If you're playing a competitive mode like a tournament, customs, or arena with a team, it's obviously important to have good players on your team, but if you're just hanging out trying to have some fun, it's also good to play with people you're friends with and can just have a good time with instead of going try hard like most of us do when we play normally. Be sure to let yourself enjoy the game, don't let it be a constant grind fest where you're constantly trying super hard to win every single game, or you're going to be much more prone to tilt and get a lot more mad when you lose. Remember to have some fun once in a while. After all, all things considered, Fortnite is still a game, and unless you're competing at the absolute top level and have severely limited practice time, you're better off just letting yourself play for fun at times. But anyway guys, as a general consensus, to avoid tilting and raging, it's best to 1. Mix things up by playing some other games and playing different modes to have some fun instead of taking everything seriously. 2nd. Limiting the amount you play at one time to reduce the stress buildup, fatigue, and tilt that multiple straight hours of gameplay tends to cause. And also getting some sort of anger device, so if you ever do get that adrenaline dump and start freaking out, you'll be able to let that energy out and get back into a normal state quickly. And finally, arguably the best option, is to practice the improvement mindset so you can not only avoid tilt and rage, but improve at the game while you're at it. These are all techniques that helped me, someone who has struggled with tilt and anger most of my life playing video games, and these also helped me improve my gameplay tremendously while I was at it. If you guys enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it a lot if you could leave a like and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more content like this. I hope these techniques help you out so you can cope with and fix any anger or tilt problems you've been having. Let me know what you thought of this video in the comments, along with any videos you'd like to see from me in the future. But anyway, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.